Hello. Today I'm going to introduce a tool that the NC MTSS team has been working on to help schools and districts analyze screening data. As you will recall, when building an MTSS, it is encouraged to build a universal screening system and not just rely on student performance on individual screening measures to measure instructional effectiveness. A universal screening system will combine student engagement measured through attendance, behavior, and academics. This tool will allow schools and districts to see student risk factors in each of these areas side by side to allow for problem solving around an entire school, a grade level, groups of students with similar needs, and even prioritize need for individual students. We are calling this tool a universal screening system tool to emphasize its use within an MTSS universal screening system. The workbook utilizes the current national recommendations around the measures and risk factors to determine academic risk for students. While your district might find you'd like to complete further analysis with additional indicators, the ones in this workbook are easiest to obtain and provide the best summary of risk for students. That is to say, based on national research, adding additional indicators doesn't increase the sensitivity of identifying students for risk. We created this tool for those of you who do not currently have a way to analyze academic behavior and attendance data side by side. The tool is not required, but hopefully will be helpful to districts who are beginning to triangulate screening information. To get familiar with the tool, we recommend that districts MTSS teams use this tool with one or two schools where you're ready to begin imp to implement an MTSS. While the school might be responsible for gathering some of the data you put in the workbook, it is recommended that a member of the district team work with the school to finalize data, analyze results, and use the screening information to plan for MTSS information. So let's take a look at the tool. When you open the Excel file, you'll open to a directions page. This page is important to review and has unique information based on which version of the spreadsheet you choose, either elementary, middle, or high. For today, we're using the middle spreadsheet. The first direction asks the user to input the cumulative days in school at the time of data entry. This is important because the number of days feeds into the attendance analysis on all other sheets in the workbook. The rest of the boxes on this page give an overview of the use of the sheets in the workbook. We're going to review these one at a time. The core summary sheet, you can see down here below, will give overall results by grade and aggregate the results to the school level. We'll take a look at this sheet towards the end of this talk. The grade level data sheets give us information on specific grade levels. The first six columns on the data entry sheet are information that can be pulled out of PowerSchool. You may have to pull the report and move some columns around, but this information can be copied and pasted from an outside spreadsheet into this workbook. Some schools might also have the ability to pull column H, the number of office dis discipline referrals from your data management system, or this information might need to be put in by hand. The next two columns, at risk in literacy and at risk in math, require a dichotomous decision of either yes or why or no in. It's recommended that districts and schools decide before using this tool what constitutes risk in the academic areas. For each level, the Directions tab will give recommendations on measures to use in determining risk. These recommendations are the same as you'll find in other places in the MTSS modules that follow National Early Warning Systems recommendations. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm using the middle school sheet for this example, and first I'm going to input the cumulative numbers of school days. For today, we are going to pretend that it's the 100th day of school, so I'm going to add 100 to the yellow box on the directions tab. 
Now I'm going to begin to enter some, some data. I'm going to use the sixth grade tab and I'm going to copy and paste some student information that I've pulled from PowerSchool. So for today we're going to just use a few records and I want to paste the information that I've copied. So I'm going to start under the student ID box. I'm going to start with my cursor in the student ID box and paste some information. You can see that based on the 10% rule for attendance, I have two students who are showing up as at risk in attendance because a percentage of school missed has been calculated for each student. Next, I will need to input the number of office discipline referrals for each student. For this example, we're going to assume that I cannot get this information easily from my data management system, and I'm going to hand enter the data. So imagine I have a printout of office discipline referrals in my hand, and I'm just transferring that information by student. And what we can see as I enter this data that we have several students who have made visits to the office. Is that I have several students who meet the threshold of more than two office discipline referrals, three students total. We'll complete the same hand entering for literacy and math. Remember, as a school or district, we will have to decide on what, constitute risk, what constitutes risk in these two areas prior to entering this data in the spreadsheet. So I can add a simple N or Y. For students who are at risk or not at risk in literacy and math. And what you can see is when a student's meeting that risk indicator, the box is going to turn yellow and it's going to feed over to our total um, indicator of if the student is meeting any risk threshold. If you're following along with the Moodle, steps for the work, what we've just done is part of step four, collect universal screening data. Before we move to any data analysis, just a note that each grade level sheet can hold up to 500 records for elementary or 1,000 records for middle and high. Once we have all the data entered, we can begin some data analysis. The core summary tab shows us results for all the data we have input. I've entered data for grades seven and eight so we can get a full school picture. And our steps for the work this aligns with step five, or school team reviews school-wide performance and progress. You can see the results of what we've just entered for sixth grade. The percentage of students meeting risk criteria in each area, and the percentage of students meeting any risk criteria and recommendations. These recommendations will align with the content flowcharts, which you saw introduced earlier in this section, and you'll see again in more detail in step nine of Steps for the Work. This information also feeds into a full school picture that can be used for planning core support. 
once you've had a chance to look at the school and grade level results, we can begin further analysis under the results tab. So this is our school-wide picture, and then a summary by each grade. So we'll use the results tab to make sense of an entire grade's worth of data. This work will assist in step six of our steps for the work, where we begin to analyze and confirm grade level data. The results tab just pulls over all the information from the data you've input with the ability to sort and filter. We would recommend first sorting in the final column at risk for yes. This will show the students who've met any risk criteria. So here I just choose yes, and I see all the students in grade six who've met any risk criteria. From there, we can filter to identify students in specific areas of risk by clicking the small down arrow next to that column and selecting Y from the filter criteria. So if we want to just see our students at risk in mathematics, We can see them here. Now we are seeing just the sixth grade students who met risk criteria in mathematics. From here, we can copy and paste the student names into this matrix tab to help with planning and implementing our standard protocol interventions. Notice this sheet is not locked, so if you'd like to add columns or um, for teacher or other information, you can. So to do that, I would simply grab my first and last names, copy, and paste that these are my students who I need to examine further in the area of mathematics. This sheet can begin assisting schools and grade levels to plan the students who might require intervention in the action steps of steps for the work.